Uh, Tuesday, October 10th, 2023, please uh, stand for a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Do we want, Noreen, are you there? Is she there on Zoom? Yes, I am. Okay, all right, all right. Um, hold on a second. We'll be right with you. Um, okay, approval of minutes. Again, I, I'm sorry. I actually, in my pocket, I started doing them for the last meeting. I'm going to backtrack, so I'll, I will get them done, I promise. Um, I feel bad because we're way behind, but um, the good thing is they're most of them are on TV, so people can watch them if they have to, and that's kind of where I, between the notes that you and I take and the mm -hmm. TV, we'll get it figured out. So, um, Tom Andrew update. I did email the Tom Andrew today and just said, I don't know if you're around, you can pop in, or if you have anything to share, he had nothing to share. So that was easy. Okay, Noreen, you ready? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, and if you need, need us to, to speak louder, that's fine. Can you see us? Right now, this is good. Can you see us? I can, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, can you see me? No, no, but we... we... There we go. Okay, Hold well. on. Oh, I think you're coming in focus, maybe. There I oh, am. there you go. Hi, hey, welcome. <laughs> okay, discussion via via Zoom with Noreen Brown about social habitat for humanity's request for a portion of Griffin Farm site for affordable housing. So let's start with that first, all right? And I know that you and you and Ellen have been talking to each other um, quite a bit, and I appreciate that because I'm not available during the day. So if you just want to give us a brief, we got a lot of stuff on the agenda, so if you just want to give us a brief kind of rundown of where your group sits as far as that property goes. So we have, um, we have been out there to look at it, and there was some confusion, so I think we looked at more than we were supposed to look at. But after clarification with Ellen, um, did, you, did you get my email last night? I think, I, I, think I did. I printed, okay. I printed out the one about Plymouth Street. Oh, okay. I sent two. Let me see if I can... Um, I think I got it. I sent another one um, that we had actually identified just a small portion of Griffin, um, the Griffin Dairy that we thought we could identify as parcels. We are waiting for a plan. Um, I believe it was Suzanne Ellen who was supposed to get us a plan. She was talking to the town. Yes, I have, um, that. I have that email. I don't have a plan. So we had looked at the area um, on the particular plan I had mentioned in my email, um, uh, areas one and two. And we missed the um, the driveway portion. I guess it was a chain link portion of the drive of the parking lot that we didn't look at originally. So we will be going back to look at that area. And we thought there was probably two or three homes you could get on that side of the parcel if interested in work. If the town, if Griffin Dairy and the town are interested in working with us. I, so the area that we were thinking about on Patterson Street, you, you you didn't you didn't see that in the beginning. Is that the? One? I'm not sure. Yes. What yeah. he, he did not know that. We were including the parking lot. The the that the stone dust parking lot in the correct. back. Correct. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. All right. Um, I'm just going to read something that we received. We did receive it a while ago, and I'm not sure if I actually read it at a meeting, but this is from the Griffin's Dairy Committee, and it's a little confusing, and we're going to need some clarification on it. Um, they were asked by the town manager just to give their opinion. I think so. To whom it may concern, this letter serves to advise you that the Griffin Dairy Farm Committee has voted to deny any request to build a port upon a portion of the Griffin Dairy Farm other than the Griffin Dairy Farm Committee. So that doesn't make any sense to me. This is in your packet, too. You do have this in your packet. Um, our committee was established to maintain the property for open space, agriculture, and recreation. It has been our mission to uphold the Edmonton community's trust in this endeavor. Thank you for your attention to this matter. So I went back to the minutes of the meeting before that, their August 12th meeting, and at the end it says a discussion and vote, and you have a copy of this yep. too, a discussion and vote ensued concerning an email forwarded from Scott which originally came from the Affordable Housing Committee, which I don't think is the case, but um, they are in the initial stages of finding property to erect affordable housing, perhaps by human Habitat for Humanity. They would like to use a portion of the Griffin Dairy Farm on Patterson Street for this project. Lorraine notes that the farm was bought by the town for agriculture, open space, and recreation. Rick mentioned that, it, that in an R30 neighborhood, a single home plot would be twice the size of Patterson Street parking area. 
Carrie made a motion to deny the request because we do not have enough information to consider this. And that was a unanimous vote. So kind of a mixed signal because the motion was to deny the request because they didn't have enough information. And then um, the, the, e the letter that we got says oh, yeah. that our committee um, vo voted to deny any request to build upon a portion. And I, this doesn't, I, maybe you guys can clarify it, but that sentence in the letter said that the Griffin Dairy Farm Committee has voted to deny any request to build upon a portion of the former Griffin Dairy Farm other than the Griffin. I think it probably meant other than by the Griffin Dairy Farm Committee. Like if they wanted to do something with that, that's what I'm reading into that. It would be up to their committee. Okay, all right. So um, we just, part of the problem is we don't, and the Griffin Dairy Farm Committee, the Board of Selectmen, no one knows what is kind of planned to go up there. You know, I mean, obviously, a Habitat for Humanity house, is it going to be a single family house? Is it going to be more than one house that you'll look? So that's part of the problem. If we, if we can find out what exactly it is you think best fits in there, and we approve it, and then we can go to these people and say, hey, look it, you know, are you guys going to be the ones that turn this down? You know, because right, right, now, it, right now it's a parking lot that's not used. It's, it's just underutilized, you know? And they, they also go on to say that um, it was the intent uh, to maintain the open space agriculture recreation. That is not the case because I was on the initial, you know, board that bought it. And uh, there was a lot of talk about selling the outskirt properties to recoup the, the $750,000 that the town paid for it. So, um, and I have records of that too, by the way. So, and um, you know, one of the current members of the board of select, but not the one that's on our committee, got up at town meeting and said those exact words. So, um, I, I'm not, I, I don't want to cause a whole, you know, but at least hear what we have to say, what we want on there, and then turn us down if that's what they want to do. So, um, I guess the ball's in your court, I think, you know, I mean, just let us know what, you, what your experts think would, would what, what the options are for up there. Okay, so um, I can resend that email because they had, yes, we had looked at the whole area and then after talking with Suzanne and Ellen, we did step back on um, I'm picturing the plan, you know, of, yeah. over to the right and then we did still identify two areas in the area of the parking lot yeah. that we thought we could build Okay. Um, on there too. So maybe we need to set up a meeting just in person or with Griffin Dairy or what do you think would be the next step? Well, so so what do you, what do you want to put there? It would be, I think it was two single, uh, one single family home. If I'm, I'm picturing the map to the left of the, the, um, the, the parking lot that we didn't look at. And then there was a road there. Um, let me see if I can pull it up on my phone here. Um, Noreen, we were only interested in the Patterson Street property and I that's, thought Dick was going to go. Think of, right. And, and then a Patterson. Yeah. I thought so I Dick was going to go back out. Say that again. I believe Dick was going to go back out. To yeah, but he was waiting for that plan from Suzanne. Oh. So the last time I talked oh, to Suzanne, right. emailed okay. Suzanne, it was a while ago. I should have followed up. I can follow up. But she had reached out to someone at the town to get the plan, and then she had actually spoken to. She said she was reaching out to Griffin Dairy, someone at the Griffin Dairy. So okay. let me follow up with her on that, unless you want to, and then um, we can see what she was. Her, remember that plan her and Dick had talked about. Okay. So you're talking about one. Two at the most single family homes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. In the in the portion of in the area of the Patterson Street. Yes, we've gone crazy and went out to the other whole side of the field, and okay. Ellen and uh, Suzanne pulled us back. So that's fine because yeah. they had identified almost five different homes throughout that area. Yeah. But now we realize it's only the Patterson Road area that we should be looking at. All right. And I don't have a zoning map in front of me, and I'm not sure if uh, someone's talking out of school or if you might know this, but it says this is an R30 neighborhood. So that means 30,000 square feet is needed. But I think there's I think there's even room for three house lots up there. Right? That would be 90. I think I thought there was a possibility of three three lots on Patterson from what I recall. I thought um, so too. I don't have a picture of the drawing. I think they have to have if I remember correctly this is 25 years ago. I think they have to have 30,000 square feet and 100 foot of frontage. If that's, that's I, I think. Sounds... I have a map right here. Yeah. 
I'm trying to see if I can find that plan. I thought I did email that both to you last night, in addition to the um, 871 Plymouth. So hold on. What does that say? That's Patterson Street. Yeah, what's that? Oh, 293. 293, that's right. It was seven, it was seven feet short of enough for, that's right. Okay. So you could definitely fit two houses there with no problem at all. And, and probably one where the parking lot is. Because it's probably, this is probably the parking lot right here. Well, that's the whole section. That's the whole, that's the whole section, right. But the, the parking lot doesn't take up this whole spot. Right. Because there's like Christmas tree thing here. We, we start planting Christmas oh, right. trees. So, okay. I mean, so probably right here is the parking lot, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so I think there's plenty of, even even just one would help the mm -hmm. town, so, okay. So, what what are we gonna do? We're gonna, you were, if, you could, if you could give me permission to share, I can share the plan I have. Is that what you're looking at now, Ellen, what I sent you yesterday? We're just looking at the original plot plan, so, okay. Well, we know exactly what we're, what we're talking about now, so you, one or two, yeah. you would like one or two Houses, single family homes up there. Yes, okay. and that's before we even looked at the area where the parking lot is. It was right next to the parking lot. Right, okay. Well, so, okay, the parking lot takes up about half of that. It, it's okay. A, it's 293 feet of frontage. If you're looking right at it, the left hand side is a parking lot, the rest is there's a fence and there's some, um, some pine trees and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so. I will resend that plan after this meeting and I'll follow up with Suzanne to see whatever the plan that her and Dick were talking about. Okay, so her, her and, and Dick from, your, from the, the South Shore yeah. Habitat have been talking, okay. So yes. I'm, she's not here to tell us what's going on, so um, maybe she can let us know. Um, we'll reach out to her and find out if she needs anything from our committee, so, okay. And is she familiar with that letter? What's that? Is she familiar with the letter that you just read about not being interested or whatever? Suzanne? Does she know about this letter? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I read it at our last meeting. Um, okay. Yeah, so, but again, they didn't, for, they, they told me, and the vote, according to the minutes is, Made the motion to deny the request because we do not have enough information to consider this. But the letter that they sent to the town manager says they voted to deny any request. So it's conflicting, you know? Okay. At least get, let us give you the information. That's what I, was, I think, we, you know, we at least deserve that right, you know, to give them, here's what we're thinking, you know, here's what's going to be left. Now, if you want to vote right. to deny it, that's fine. And I honestly don't think it's up to them to deny it. It's up to the selectmen to decide what happens to that property. In the long okay. Run. Okay. So. Um, yeah, I'll follow up with Suzanne after this meeting. Okay. Cool. All right. While I have you here, and I think it's somewhere on the agenda, but I hope it is. Um, yeah, we can follow we can discussion on the affordable housing trust CPA funding request, as well as votes on endorsing habitats and Abington Historical Commission's request. So you are going to put in a request. Correct? Correct. All right. Yeah. And Form 1 is due in, was it next what week, right? October 17th. Yeah, next week. Okay. So you'll be at that meeting October 17th with your request? Or do you want so us? So our board, our board is discussing it um, on the 11th. Um, and I believe our development team will be submitting um, for project eligibility on the 17th. But yes, I will probably be there with them. All right. So that's tomorrow night, right? 11th is tomorrow night, I think? Yes. So yes. after that, and you guys take your vote, can you email us the form so we know exactly what it is we're, we're talking about? Because I, I, I'm going to ask our members to go to that same meeting that you're going to be at for our own uh -huh. requests, and then we can, you know, endorse yours. Or I'm just right. not, I'm just not sure what you're what you're going to ask for. Are you asking for the total funding? I, that's I'm, I'm confused. So, well, yeah, that's what I have to see what the board is going to be willing to put up to, to, to vote on. So, yes, we were going to see what, um, what, they could, what they could submit, um, what we could apply for, and how much is available. So I did speak briefly to Kelly, and she seemed to think that a purchase, a purchase of an affordable a home to use for affordability would, would be eligible. Obviously, she didn't tell me that. You know, she didn't commit to that, but she said it sounded like something that we should submit. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then we were just going to ask for the full amount and see what was available. And the full amount will be? Uh, roughly 296 Right. Okay. All right. It's kind of a catch-22 because the more money you folks get, the less money we're apt to get as, okay. the, as the Affordable Housing Trust. However, you know, if it does create one additional unit of housing, you know, it's something we might be interested. I don't know. Obviously, that's a good price for a single-family home in Abington. Um, is that a lot? I mean, is there other 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 funding sources available for that? That's one of the questions they ask you, I think, on your on your form too. Other 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 options for funding besides us, besides the community preservation trust. Exactly. I mean, so the, that's uh, the that's so the purchase price of the home. But if you looked at the pictures that I sent over yesterday, yeah. there's a full rehab that has to happen on the home. Okay. So we will we'll be, we still will have to raise money to um to um get the home livable because it's not livable currently apparently it's been vacant for i i think if my memory serves three to four years yes. yeah so um the the price opinion that i sent over from the broker we found that their cost for repair was a lot lower because it basically it needs everything from kitchens to bathrooms to roofs to renovated hardwood floors and all kinds of you'll see the clean out sure. <laughs> as well there's still stuff in there so again that that's the ask um and you know i don't even know what's available kelly wasn't sure what was available she didn't know what the state match was so we understand that that might not even be available but i'll have a better idea from our board okay um so our executive committee all right, so everybody watching on tv this is for 871 plymouth street and this is a house that and you can interject here um this is for a house that was uh, owned by hud Housing and Urban Development. It's a vacant property note sale. I think someone passed away that owned it and had, took it over. Um, and now that so the Habitat for Humanity is now into purchasing HUD, HUD properties. Um, this would be the first one that you guys have done? Yes, this is our first opportunity. Okay. And um, it is, the estimated sale price is 296000 um, If you look at the comps in the neighborhood, uh, that's a great price. Uh, it'd be a nice starter home for people. It's, it's in Abington. It's on a main, it's on a great location. It's been vacant for several years, so I'm sure the town is probably it's probably even in tax. Re oh no, the HUD's probably paying the taxes, but it'd be nice to yeah. uh, and, and make some improvements and build the tax re revenue up. So this would be this would end up being owned by people who put the sweat. I mean, obviously this is this isn't even going to happen until February at the earliest, but this would be someone put sweat equity into it and would you would give it them the home right yes it would be f to a family earning no more than 80 percent of the area median income mm -hmm. um, and they would take part in um you know building on their home with volunteers so we would get the community involved local businesses build days with volunteers you know faith organizations and um hopefully get a, com a nice community build going and then um the family would be moving into the house and they would have an affordable mortgage okay all right so I think that our endorsement of your request would probably go a long way or help. Um, the only problem is I don't know. It sounds to me like you're going to ask for the you're going to ask for the full price. Well, I, I, I mean, I'll take advice from you guys too. You know, we don't want to just you know we don't want to compete. You know, right. um, you think it's unreasonable? You know, no, no, like no. no you, you, you guys, you guys do what you need to do. I mean, it's, okay. you know, we we're doing pretty well. Um, all right. Endorsing Habitat's request. So you don't. I don't have the request in front of me. So if the board wants to wait, we could do it before. If you're able to meet next week, is it is it Wednesday? What what nights does the does the CPA meet? Tuesday. Tuesday nights so will be next Tuesday night. So if you want to meet before Tuesday, we'll have their document. They can even come probably come a little bit early, and we can endorse it at that point. When we know more about what it is. Yeah, the meeting's at seven. If we could we meet six. a little bit before that. Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. I won't be here. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. I'm going away. Good for you. So you wouldn't be here Monday either. Then. Is, there form, is there a standard form that gets filled out? I'm, I'm, the development's on here now. I know they're trying to research that too. Is there a form that gets filled out for the um, eligibility? Yes, project? yes, there is. If you go on abingtonma.gov, Abington Mass. You might have it already. Okay. Yeah, Abington, I, th I, I yeah. think you probably do. I think we may have sent it your way because I know you mentioned it but if you go to this uh, under the uh, government groups the community preservation it has the forms okay. right on the left hand side 
It's just I saw the guidelines and I saw all that. I guess I just missed the part um, on the of the actual form. But yeah, I can pull that up. So the first the first the the first application that you have to fill out is it's just a re application for eligibility. It's simple questions amount requested, total cost of the project, other funding sources. You don't have to get into detail. This is just to see if you're eligible, and we know we this is eligible, so we know that. Right. You know. Yeah. So I mean, we could always take a vote to say we know it's eligible. You know, as it comes closer, we'll endorse it. But if you get, if you vote tomorrow night and you get it, just send it my way, and I'll let the members have it. We can okay. decide what to do with it. Okay. Okay. I mean, we can also take a vote now, but I don't know. Not having anything in front of us is kind of tough to vote. Um, right. Plus, they yeah. might vote for something different at the meeting tomorrow night. So. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, you might see. All right. Like you said, this is the first time we've done this. This is the first opportunity we have for these HUD notes. Um, in fact, of the first round that came out, Massachusetts only had four opportunities. We were one of the affiliates that had them, so we're not sure how often they come around. Sure. Um, and this is the first time we're trying to convince the board to pay for stuff, because typically we, we've been pretty lucky about getting stuff um, donated, some you know donated land. So um, that's part of the push for tomorrow night to get the executive committee on board with purchasing that. Well, if you guys purchase it and then you don't get CPA monies, then you're gonna have to pay for it yourself. Well, no, see, it'll it'll all be on the timing because right now the way um, the in fact, if you look at the summary that I gave you from the uh, fund manager, right now it's not even ready to be. We wouldn't be able to take title till June or September of next year. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right now they're in the process of clearing out the title and trying to get it through a foreclosure sale. So the board, I, the board will not. Be, I know the board will not want anything to close without us knowing what our funding is going to be. Right. Um, because yes, they don't plan on paying the, the, the price of two ninety six for one home. Does yes, and I don't think well, I, that's up to the CPA if they want to do it too. Are there other funding sources? Exactly, yeah, right. Was that exactly? Yeah, it's up to both. You know. Yeah. Is are there other funding sources that South Shore Habitat for Humanity could use besides CPA? Um, for the fu for we've we've never had funding sources for purchasing before. But we do apply for grants and everything once we have a property to to, to build on. Mm -hmm. So one challenge my development team is having is how do we ask for money for a project we don't have? Right. So for us to, for us to fill out grants, we should at least have some kind of um, property control or you know some kind of document that says we have this project. Yeah. So they're struggling with how to figure out how to purchase it and how to file for how to find find grants that allow for the purchase. Yeah. Whereas once we have it, it's easier to raise money through grants and fundraising and, and um, individual interests and companies once the project's been secured. So, Noreen, this is new to you, but other other habitats have done this before, I'm assuming. Um, not the ones I spoke with. Of the four of us that were selected, that were, of the four affiliates in Mass that had this opportunity, yeah. um, none of them had done this before. Okay. And of the four that were selected, um, one of them doesn't need this opportunity because their pipeline is pretty hefty. Yeah. Um, and the other one was a very small one-bedroom home that wouldn't fit the program. Okay. And I, honestly, I didn't speak to the fourth affiliate. I only spoke to the two local affiliates. Yep. Yeah. So we're a test case. Nice. <laughs> so is it possible? Case, yes. Is it possible for us to just, um, like, endorse her? Her well, request, like, we don't have the specifics, but just say that we support. We support her going in front of CPA to ask. What well, you for. could, what well, you could word is that we endorse um, her application for eligibility, but not, mean, maybe not for the you know total cost of the project. Because then you'd be able to, you know, whatever they're going to do with the amount. But we, they would at least know that we are endorsing, supporting that you're requesting it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'd hate, yeah. No, I, I get that, <clears> but. <throat> That can't be taken as a blanket, you know. They want three hundred thousand dollars, and we well, we voted to endorse it. We have vote, we have mm -hmm. we have no problem with the Habitat for Humanity applying for CPA funds to purchase more affordable housing. Maybe that would be the way to do it. We have no problem with that. Right. All right. Do you want to make that as a motion or? Yeah, because if we are not going to be able to meet, and it's better to at least know that they've got you've got the support, mm -hmm. you know, even if the figures aren't okay. down. So then your motion is 
to just support habitat to go in front of CPA to request to request funding for this property 871 Plymouth Street okay all right to second do you think that's too vague no you're okay you're yeah. basically you're just saying we support them putting in an application through CPA right. to create more affordable housing in Abington right okay all right so mm -hmm. motion made did you say I seconded. Seconded. Um, I'm in favor. Um, any op opposition? None. Uh, our motion carries. Okay, so there we go. So we are all for you guys to put in an application for eligibility. Okay, and you won't have a problem with that. Um, right. Then when it comes back to the amount, then we can you know take a more formal vote. When you're when you when you get through to phase two, which you have to explain everything in detail, what you're doing, when the project is going to happen where all your funding is coming from, then we can take another vote. Okay. So, okay. all right, and if you are gonna be, the, if you're not gonna be there next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday at 7 uh -huh. p.m. Let us, let us know because, I mean, I don't really wanna speak, uh, well, we can just tell them exactly what we voted. You know, that we've, no, been yeah. that, that we've been talking to you about it and, you know, we know it's eligible and it's worthwhile and we can even just tell them, you know, we're not sure about the cost, but you, you're probably going to have because it does ask for the amount requested, so you're going to have to put that on here, you know. Right. So in the email that I sent last night, it does outline all the costs, you know, what they purchased it for, mm -hmm. all their carrying costs. But they've been carrying it out for over a year, mm -hmm. and their current what they anticipate the future carrying costs are okay. um, based on their, you know, their estimates. Right. So. Um, so. You know, what's important is, is we'd like to move it up quicker to close it quicker because the price goes down mm -hmm. but we can't really take title to anything without understanding what the funding is because I know the board would never vote for that they didn't understand how much we were getting if, if we were getting anything at all so um, like right now I think I said that when they when I showed you the numbers yesterday they actually um, estimate the carrying cost between taxes insurance and management and everything on the house is like three thousand dollars a month so yeah. the longer we sit on it the more it goes up sure um so originally this was supposed to be ready this fall um but um they got tied up with um an assignment that had been erroneously recorded or not recorded at all so they're trying to clean up the title on that okay so we'll let it be known next tuesday that we voted in favor of uh your phase one without a dollar amount mm -hmm. and then if you'll come up with a dollar amount and then we can just discuss that you know at the meeting so right. just, okay has a, has the cpa determined how much money is available for housing that's what she wasn't sure well that, um, that, that's that's the thing the cpa it's kind of a weird thing is that they don't have guidelines in other words they have to give a minimum of 10 percent but yeah but they can give yeah, up but, they can give up to 80 percent of their pool for housing or they give 80 percent of their pool up to they have to give at least 10 percent to three different categories so they could right. give up to and we've gotten i think one year we got three hundred thousand, or we got two hundred fifty thousand one year so it just depends mm -hmm. on you know it depends on the, the match but it also depends on how they if a lot of people come out of the woodwork and say we want new fields and a new you know a new pickleball right. court and they could use 80 percent for for uh, you know sports or recreation i should say um historic yeah. historic's going to actually ask historical commission is going to ask for some funds and we haven't really we generally haven't asked for a lot but we're going to ask for a little bit this year uh, i'm on the historical commission too so um we're going to ask for some funds for them too so it might be a little different than yet they, they've been housing hasn't been a top priority in abington because we're new, we're formed, we're starting, to, and now we're starting to, I think we're starting to gain a little momentum and people realize, okay, you know, it's a, it's an important need. So that helps us and it, it should help you too. So, um, yeah. all right. So uh, it, there is no set number. There is no set number because they can go, go anywhere from 10% for housing or 80% of their fund to housing. Does that make sense? She said they hadn't even received the state match yet, so she, she didn't even know what the whole pool was. No, you're not. They're not going to know that. But it, you have an idea. It's kind of kind of consistent, and and of course you have to ask me what the numbers are. But you know, we've only gotten ten percent, and we got like a quarter of a million dollars. So it's millions of dollars, right? right? I okay. mean, I think it should be. I think it's usually about right. a million, but I'm not positive. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have anything else uh, that anybody wants to, to ask, Noreen? Do you want to mention this next? 
thing on the agenda about the house. The oh, the discussion of other town-owned property that could be used by South Shore Habitat for Humanity, including former fire stations. Okay, so this is a kind of a general question, um, a general statement that I put down. Um, the last time I think we met with you on Zoom, um, I was charged to reach out to the Board of Assessors. Um, I reached out to them um, recently, I should say, but via email. I have not heard back. Um, I am the chairman of the Affordable Housing Trust and was hoping you could provide some help. The South Shore Habitat for Humanity was asking us about town-owned land and properties that could possibly be used to create much more much-needed affordable housing here in Abington. They are looking for a listing of all town-owned properties, including sites that at first glance may not look buildable, since they ha may, may, have, may be able to go through a friendly 40B process. I might be talking out of school there, but members of the Affordable Trust and South Shore Habitat are also more than willing to attend a Board of Assessors meeting to discuss our ideas and provide you with a better idea of what it is we are looking for and reasons why. Thank you so much for your time. So I did reach out to the assessors, and when I hear back, um, this is an email via the town website to um, Jolanta, Jolanta, who you know, I think is the deputy assessor in town. Um, I'm also going to forward this to the members of the Board of Assessors just in case um, they did not get it. So I'll let you know what they say, but I'm trying to get you a list, okay, All of, right, of town-owned property. Um, I, did, I did mention in that same uh, agenda item, um, I, would like, I, would like, <laughs> I would like a lot of things, but I would like, and this is actually falls into our action plan, our strategic plan that we're going to talk about in a little while, is town surplus property, the sale of it, go to us or the actual surplus land go to the affordable housing to see if we can use it for maybe not habitat for humanity but for housing in general it could be fall under your auspices or it could just be us so i'm going to um, see if our, our board will take a vote but you know there's there's a, there's a vote this weekend or next weekend's a vote but there's a town meeting and they're talking about maybe eliminating two fire stations in town and those okay. those buildings are going to be who knows who knows what's going to happen there was uh i think there was talk that maybe they'd be auctioned off is that what that's what's called. you know um if a couple things if they're auctioned off why can't the money it's a one-time game you know can we can, i wonder if that's my car um can, can we um can we get the can we get the proceeds you know for affordable housing or um uh, if the building's in halfway decent shape like the schools why can't we use it for housing so Right. Just an idea, um, but that could help you folks out too. That because if that happens, that's two more pieces of town-owned property that would be on the list. I think I heard they're used, and they're going to plan on using one of those. For well, we can talk about that in a second because that's not what we heard. Okay, so I think we're done with Noreen. That didn't sound very nice, did it? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> um, that's fine. Okay. Um, so tomorrow night you're taking your vote. Let, let us know how you make out. Okay. All right, we will. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And that forms, that forms on the abingtonmass.gov site. If you can't for some yeah. reason find it, just shoot me an email and we'll, we'll get it to you. Okay? They might already have it, though, but I know they're working behind the scenes for me, so I'll talk to them tomorrow to make sure they have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noreen. Take care. Bye. Okay. Everybody good with that? Mm hmm Okay, good, good vote, I think. Um, we'll just agree in principle, basically, so that's fine, I think. Uh, what's next on the agenda? Uh, let's do the Abington Historical Commission's request. Okay. So, I think it's in here in your packet somewhere. Um, there is a CPA application for eligibility, Abington Historical Commission. Do you see that? Yep. I think I put everything out of order here. Um, they, they probably weren't in order to begin with. So, um, I do this up today. We voted at our last meeting, and we the Historical Commission is meeting tomorrow night. So the reason I brought this forward is this is what we had talked about with uh, Judy Barrett about <clears throat> trying to get um, a historical master plan, pres historic preservation plan <clears throat> that would also involve the North and Center schools just to see whether, you know, what's the town's priorities? What do they want to do with them? Are they historical? Do they want to hang on to them? Do they want to um, keep it historical and, and that way get the historic tax credits. This is something that's not going to be anything anytime soon.
it's going to take a while, and, and the historical commission needs it done either way. So it's not like it's something that requires um, a vote from us. I mean, if we want to say, yeah, it would probably be a good idea because there might be other, you know, it could be that the, one of the fire stations would, could be considered historic because they're older, you know, and then um, this enables, if we do our work right, if the Historical Commission does its work right and puts it on the state list, then they're eligible for historic tax credits through the state and the, and the, fed, the federal government. So this is basically just to uh, uh, historic preservation vision, creation of historic districts, demolition. Blah, blah. None of that really is important as far as this goes. But it's just like, okay, we need to concentrate on these buildings. We need, we need an expert to come in and say, here's what your plan should be. Kind of like we, we have a plan now, and you will be you know, we have a housing trust strategic plan. This is basically going to have a strategic plan for the historical commission. So, and obviously I would think that that would incorporate, it may, be, it may not be done until after the decision is made on the schools, but at least, you know, it's a possibility. So what it is, it's a matching grant to the state. No guarantee the town's gonna get it. Um, but it's, we figured we'd ask for $30,000 to have a consult. And Barrett could probably do this too. Obviously it would have to go out to bid, but uh, it's a matching grant, so we're asking for 15 and the town would, the grant would be for 15, and the town CPA would give us 15. So you, if you're interested, you can, we can vote on it. If you don't want to vote on it, I'm okay with that too. It's just something that, um, I will give you another example. The Historic Commission is putting in a grant for the library um, to take the, the room in the library. I might have already talked about this. All the documents are 30 years old. They're just sitting there, and there's, there's no rhyme or reason. So we're gonna ask a, a curator to come in and do an assessment of what's in there whether it's worth keeping, how to display it properly so people can tour that room. So I'm trying to get the endorsement of the library trustees for that just because it's historic and it's in the library and they want to see that. So this is something on the same, on the same you know, is this something that we want to endorse? This is something that Judy Barrett said we should probably do. It's also something that's in the um, town's master plan. It's an older master plan, but it said this is the stuff that should, historic commission should be doing. You, know, you need to prioritize things in town, you know. So this is to basically a study of what's in town or what might be historic, what might not be historic, and what. Yeah, the, been the best of. corner, the best plan of action, the best principle, the, the best ways to get things done to preserve the town's history in the buildings, and it's not just buildings too. It's also you know different sites and um, you know signs, different you know just different things like that. So yes, this is a so this is a a. Uh, CPA request that the Historic Commission is going to put in next week too as well. So, um, so if you want to make, endorse it, you can. If you want to just hold off, or if you can maybe you can speak on it at the Tuesday night if you want to, if you're able to go Tuesday night. But you can't. But are those uh, recorded? Uh, I don't know, Ellen. Don't um, they they do record some of them. Do you? You don't know? Okay. I'm trying to remember if uh, I don't. I don't think they are. I'm not positive though. I sat in the audience a couple, yeah, you, couple last couple. Yeah, ones. you know what? You're right. Yeah. I was thinking we had a, we had we were trying to do Zoom last week, but it was was not being recorded. That's right. Because the last time. because the chair sits there sometimes and here sometimes and stuff. So mm -hmm. I don't think they're recorded. No. Um, so we don't need to act on that if you don't want to. It's not a big deal. It is something that Judy recommended doing um, to try to help get the tax credits for the. Um, well, I think we should endorse it. If it's going to help um, at the CPC meeting, I don't see why we shouldn't endorse it. Yeah, I, I think it could make future projects in Abington for affordable housing more palpable, I mm -hmm. should say, for developers, mm -hmm. so we can get some historic tax credits. For and, and it's not it's not just the schools. It could be for anything. Right. So yeah. these are just the studies. It's not then then they come in front of. Then we have a plan. Then we have, just like just like we're going to discuss our strategic plan, you know. Mm -hmm. Which and the CPA was actually asking for us to have a strategic plan. They talked about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you got done yet? So I think they like this kind of stuff. And I know the historic commission, you know, we need focus. We need to. Fo we have so many ideas and stuff like that. And so does the historical commission. Um, long dormant, you know. It's been probably been 30 years since we've updated uh, 
the historic properties listed in Abington, it, it's pretty bad. I, I don't even know if probably it, maybe like a quarter of them already been torn down. Hmm. Uh, well, it'd be well, nice to be able to save. about that house up on, on um, Bedford Street that they're doing over? They, it's done over. It's yeah. all done. It's up on. It's on the market now. Yeah, it's just it's it's tough because we've tried years ago to do a, a demolition delay by law. That just means. You, you have to, you can't delay, you can't tear something down right away. You have to wait, you have to study a little bit, give you a, a cooling off period, and that way it gives the developer some time. You know, maybe I won't tear it down if I have to wait, and maybe I can, someone wants to do this. It also, historic districts, people get scared of historic districts, but uh, it just means it looks nice. It's historic, you know. You can still do stuff to your house, you know. People don't own your house, but, you know, they ask that you know, there's covenants, you know, you can't replace. It, 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 they're all different, but you you know that you know the towns when you drive through them, and there's a historic district because the houses are beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know it increases the value of the whole town. Abington does have one historic district. It's Island Grove. That whole area is called is, is considered a historic district, uh, which doesn't stop us from we have to replace some that whatever it is the pavilion up there. Mm -hmm. You know uh, we're replacing that because it's just falling down. It doesn't. It's not stopping us from doing it, but we want to try to keep it a period pieces. But so if you want to endorse this, um, you can. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to endorse the Abington Historical Commission application for eligibility for $15,000 uh, matched matching grant um, for to uh, preservation project for the preservation, preservation project. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's for a community wide historic preservation plan. Okay, cool. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, unanimous. Okay, thank you guys. And that's money that it's not coming out of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund's pocket. It's coming out of the historical pocketbook, I should say. All right, discussion of other town-owned property that could be used. We discussed it a little bit. Um, fire stations. Um, um, Ellen heard on... Ellen watches every meeting in town, I think. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, at the end of one of their last meetings, it may have been their last meeting, um, there was discussion that they were going to, town manager noted that they were going to auction off the two fire stations. Correct. After, if this project is, is approved. Correct. My understanding was, uh, maybe six months ago, was that he had the idea of, keep it the, the Rockland Street Fire Station as a fire museum. That's what I heard at one point. I didn't hear that. Yeah, Who's, so. I think, the last, I think the last I heard um, was, it might have been a FinCom meeting that, the, uh, that Derek attended. I'm not positive, don't quote me on that, but they decided that it would probably be better just to sell both buildings. To, to not have what, the Rockland what, Street. What did you say, Derek? Derek Hamadi. Yeah. He was, he was a peer, they were discussing. It wouldn't be up to him. It would be up to no. It, oh. He was at, he, they presented to a few different boards. Right. I'm getting my meetings confused. Okay. And I believe it was him. It could have been somebody else. But they decided that it would probably be better to um, sell both stations rather than keep one of them for either a museum or for storage. Oh, okay. I right. believe that's what it what was decided. Okay, so th that's the only reason I put that on the agenda was for that reason is like I really think and I think when we talk about our strategic plan, um, one of the ways that we can get resources is uh, let's see. Well, let's, well, let's, let's talk about, you know, selling a surplus land. You know, I was never in favor of, as a selectman, I was never in favor of using that money to fund a budget because it's a one-time only, you know. Um, and now these other buildings here, because, oh, we'll sell it, we'll take the money and do this. But I, I think it would be great to have it for affordable housing, you know, to go into the Affordable Housing Trust to kind of, you know, boost it up. But... At some point, I would like to, and I'm pretty sure this is a part of our strategic plan, is to talk to the boards, powers that be, and say, look, you know, 
you get, you get we want to institute inclusionary zoning so that if you build developments, you know, they have to pay, either provide with 10, 15, 20% of affordable housing or, or, or pay money to the, to the trust fund. Um, surplus land, you know, town buildings, you know, write a first refusal for the, the, the housing trust so we can put more housing up. And that, that doesn't sound right, more affordable housing. Because <laughs> the last thing, people, people don't want a lot of housing. <clears throat> but the new numbers came out, right, and we're way down now. Is it like 8% now? I don't know. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I didn't see them. We're not, we're not, yeah. close, to 10, we're not close to 10 anymore. No, but I'm not sure if... Um, I wrote it down at some point, but... I, I was trying to find a list with what was what that what was on that list yeah um, I'm not sure if zero summer streets on there okay but I couldn't find where the actual listing is yeah I mean I did I did see the, the number I think it was like 7.9 yeah that's exactly what I thought it was just what eight percent yeah but you're right I don't know if that I thought I, I thought that was for all approved projects but I don't know how far along in the approved you know approval has to be and well that's as of when What's the date on that on that um, number that came out? Uh, the other one was what? 20, I don't know. 20s? I don't, I, no, it was even before that. I wrote it down. Like, what, what it's just like a twenty. I think it's like a twenty twenty, and they weren't approved at that point. Yeah. So that number sh should go up. Yeah. So, but but it's not. We're not as close as we were before. No. no. Okay. So we will agree to that. Okay. <clears throat> I just wanted to get that out there that at some point, you know, in our strategic plan, we'll probably talk about it. Is we, we need to somehow not just rely upon the CPA for funding. You know, we have to come up with some creative and other ideas to get funds to do this, you know. And this is something where we could get funds and or we could get actual physical property, you know. So um, discussion of action draft plan. Okay, so I passed that out when I came in. I, this is at, literally hot off the presses. Um, I didn't even have time to print the cover the cover page. It was a nice cover with a ton of having the seal on it. Um, I don't know how we want to handle this. I would probably like to be more members here when we talk about it. However, you know. I'd I like do, to read it. Yeah, exactly. You just got it today? No, I, did, I <coughs> literally, I was printing out a quarter of uh, quarter six. Um, that's why I couldn't wait anymore because it was taking forever to print at home. Um, so let me let me just let me just do this real quick. Actually, let me read the email that came with it, and then we'll look it over real quick. I don't, you know, you're right. We can't really vote on it, um, but we can next week probably after. I'm attaching a current draft of the strategic plan for your review. The mission statement is the one that the um, housing trust previously approved, so that's probably a good thing. So I did not change that. We base the vision and values on the homework of the trust completed as well as the actions. You'll note that the background section is reserved. I don't know what that means, background section. Oh, I think on the first, I saw the background somewhere. Oh, right here on page, two, the third page in. Page number, number two, background section reserved mm -hmm. on the left. Um, You'll note the background section reserved. That will likely be two or two and a half pages and just provides a background on Abingdon's housing needs identified in the um, housing production plan and the master plan. Okay, so that's simple enough for them to do. I hope you have time to print share tonight because the meeting starts in 30 minutes. I'm sorry for the delay, but we hope this allows for a good discussion. Okay, uh, the Affordable Housing Trust has identified a set of four areas of activity to focus on operations, resources, solutions, education, training, advocacy, coordination, and collaboration. The last pages are like year one, year two, things that they want us to do. Again, I'm not going to go over it all. Um, resources required, funds, property, um, property, the Avenue Affordable Housing Trust can more readily facilitate housing projects when it has land available to do so. This can be achieved by granting existing town-owned structures or land to the Abington Housing Trust, private land donations, funds for purchasing suitable properties, public-private partnerships. Um, so that's kind of like what I was touching upon. You know, if this town on property, uh, community support, partnerships, capacity, and then there's the whole toolbox is the last four pages or so, which is year one, what to do, year two, what to do. Um, the first goal, they say, is to uh, uh, record a declaration of trust with the Registry of Deeds. Um, if it's okay, with our board, uh, I'll entertain a motion that we request the town manager to
to do that because I don't know how it gets done. Um, but they say it's a priority to record a declaration of trust. I guess it just gives the housing trust power to do, you know, to sell and buy things, which was, has already, was already given to us by town meeting, but I guess it's just with well, the registry of deeds needs to be done, so. I'll make that motion to request that the town manager um, get a declaration of trust, record a de declaration of trust with the registry of deeds. Okay. Um, I'll second that. Right, we have a motion and second to, uh, to start the process of a declaration of trust. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, all, all unanimous. All right, so I'm not going to talk about anything else. However, if it comes up next Tuesday, we will just say we do have an affordable housing trust, and one of the main goals is um, resources and solutions, you know, um, regular training and, and how we're going to, you know, up. I'll, I'll probably make some crib notes from just saying, okay, this is what we're going. This is what we're going to start to do in year one. Have more meetings, let, educate people, that sort of stuff. So just um, if they ask, you know, because you know we paid for this. Uh, don't ask me how much we paid for it, but we paid for it. And I, and I I have a feeling that there's still a little bit of work to be done because she's talking about another two two and a half pages, and I would think that if we see something in there that's glaring, like no, this isn't going to work. So please look it over. Um, I will email it to the rest of the members and ask them to look it over. And depending upon whether we meet next week or have a special meeting for it, we we'll probably should have a special meeting for this. Mm -hmm. You know, not rush it through it in half an hour for the next meeting. So, all right. So discussion of action draft plan. Everybody okay with that? What we mm -hmm. just accomplished? Cool. Vote to approve paying Barrett Consulting bill. Tom Manager asked me to put this on the agenda. We have a bill in front of us, an invoice for sixty-five hundred dollars. This is for the Housing Trust Action Plan, even though she told us not to call it an action plan. They yelled at me when I did, now they're calling it a strategic plan. Anyways, um, technical assistance, meetings with Housing Trust, mobilization, review and assessment of available documents, strategic planning sessions, three, miscellaneous project coordination. I can only assume that this is not the total bill, because I think they would, um, I think $10,000 was the estimate, I believe, so um, this is part of it. So um, I actually was not going to take this vote, but they gave this to us so um, with, with, with 30 seconds to spare. So do we want to vote to pay for this? It's not the entire amount, I'm guessing. Um, we could ask, you know, part of the motion to pay it. We could just say, what do you think it's left to I Is there a breakdown of it? Mm -hmm. Like time-wise, it's just a list of a list here and then a I number. Think, I, think, <clears throat> I probably don't have that on me now, but... When we got the estimate, when the town manager got the estimate, I think there was a breakdown of what it, it entailed. Okay. Um, you know, the $10,000 talked about what it was going to entail, so I don't have that in front of me. I apologize. I probably have it somewhere, but I do have it somewhere. But, um, so, I mean, they did do some work. Um, um, they met with us in person at least once. Did Judy come to, ever come to a meeting? She came to one, didn't she? Yeah, downstairs. Yeah, yeah, so Judy came to a meeting and Alexis came to a meeting and they did this, so uh, we're on the hook anyways and we, we do right. have the money to, to do it, so um, we could, if someone wants to you know, make a motion to pay it and just ask for how much do you think, you know, what, what's left to do, I, you know, we can reach out to that with that too. You know? Is this the first bill we've gotten? From yes, it okay. is. It is the first bill we've gotten from Barrett. Uh, I think there might have been another bill for them for the center of school, but that was the t to the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's review an assessment of available documents and data. Probably everything that we gave them Just and everything that they, you know, they probably have to go through the housing plan and everything. They reference a lot of different things in here. Do they? Uh, Just putting everything together, right? Yeah. Mobilization. <laughs> That means that just means the gas are coming out of the they meeting. Got, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get into like stuff like this, it's like I don't know. Yeah. You know, they did work. Yep. They did do work. So. Yep. You know, and um, I will tell you, they kind of. I thought kind of what she did at the last meeting was was pretty good. Yes. When Alexis came to the meeting and kind of gave us some focus and. 
kind of made us not, not change, but kind of fine tune some of the ideas that we had, you know? Like we were so big on, we, we want to have an affordable house. We want to have um, buy downs for first time home buyers. Well, that's not a priority right now. We have to worry about other stuff first. It, that, that's true. We'd love to do all this stuff, but let's get some money and let's get some, some uh, kudos. Let's get some endorsement from around the town so that they know what we're doing and why we're doing it. Because, you know, it's going to be, I don't want, I don't want Section 8 next to me. That's, that's not what we're shooting for, you know, and I, I know that's going to be a battle, you know. We're already having battles with, um, with Griffins. You know, I think that they're scared about what's going to go up there, and it's just it, something's going to fit in the neighborhood. It is one right around the corner, a habitat right. community house. It's not, you know, and then it's going to be, well, what, what difference is one house going to make? Well, you know what? Three or four houses might make a difference. So you just have to go back and see what what went on, you yeah. know, yeah. with control of the, of the pool. It, it always comes down to, it always comes down to, and it's funny, I was looking up old stuff from Griffin's Dairy, and um, uh, from 20, 30 years ago, it just says the selectmen did not act on two or three different proposals. You know, they just they didn't act on them. You know, they, they, people are, sometimes are afraid to make a decision for votes or for to offend people. We learned it from this whole Glenowitz way, you know. And, you know, they, oh, well, we'll get you another piece of property, but well, where, where's the other property you're going to, you know? Where's the, where's, where's the field you wanted to put up so badly, you know? Where's the, they want to have a memorial out here for police and fire. You know, remember at the end of the, when the Glenowitz property there, up here near the school, that never happened. It's just people say stuff just to not make enemies, I guess. Well, it might just take a little bit of investigative work and see where, you know, yeah. what all came about over the years because the, the mm -hmm. committee has changed and yeah. who yeah. knows, maybe. Yeah. Maybe they do have control of that whole plot. But you would think you would learn because, like I said, I was looking over the Hemden Hod and uh, the Bonnet Griffin's Dairy. That's very important. We've got to keep it. We've got to keep yeah. it. We keep it. They didn't do anything about it. They let it burn to the ground. Mm -hmm. But yet they saved the, the house that you know some of the selectmen's friends were renting for really cheap. That house, that the, the big three, four family that was on there. It's just, I don't know. Disheartening sometimes, you know, because that barn should be there. It's a beautiful barn, post and mm -hmm. beam construction. Yep. You know, because they just hem and haw, and they're afraid to make the wrong decision. But sometimes you have to make it, just like in life, you have to make a decision. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting out of my pedestal and preaching. But anyways, let's go back to this. Do we want to vote to pay this? Do you want more information? Do you want to? Uh, the town manager asked me to put this on the agenda, so it's on the agenda. We do have a draft. For the strategic plan. I'd like to see more of a breakdown, personally. I mean, the amount's probably fine, but this doesn't really tell us. Yeah, but I don't think they they told us what they're going to charge us for. Okay, meetings with housing trust. Were they going to charge us a thousand dollars for each meeting? I don't think that was broken down. So it's just a matter of we're going, you're going to get this finished document at the end. It's going to cost you ten thousand dollars. They can come up with it however they want it to come up. I'm not, I'm not boohooing you. I, I have no problem with whatever yeah. you guys decide, you know. You know? Or you, you vote to pay this and just say, you know, we, we, can you give us a complete breakdown for the remainder of what's left to do and the cost associated with that? What's, what's left to How do? About, can, we, can we do... Uh, they have a due date of 921. I, yeah, that's the, the other date, thing I was the noticing. Date was the date was done. Passed. Has a date on it and has a due date of nine twenty. Do you think they're going to charge us interest? No, but I'm just wondering if they, are, you know. Well, this was supposed to be done a lot sooner. Remember, she said mm -hmm. it was going to be done at the end of August, mm -hmm. or was it the end of September? It was the end of September, but we had to get her the documents by the end of August, and we did. So. So what happens if we don't approve to pay this? We just have to wait and see if they give us any a type of breakdown, and then. Mm -hmm. You do whatever can, you we want. can we say we'll uh, vote to approve to pay it, but on the condition that we get a, a more detailed breakdown? Yeah, if you want. I don't know. Yeah, find out what mobilization means. <laughs> yeah, I just... <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. 
I'm open to anything you guys want to do. Because they have done meetings with housing meetings with housing trust, but then they have strategic planning sessions three. So how far back are they going with you know? Yeah. Well, this is the first bill we've gotten for any of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For anything that Judy Barrett or Alexis has done, this is the first bill we've gotten for anything. Right. We've met with her a couple times with fail, but I mean, we were meeting with her at the town meeting in the spring and trying to meet with her online. Remember, we had, couldn't oh, get a connection. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been yeah. trying to meet with her for a while, but. Yeah. So what's your motion? Ellen? I don't know. What do you think? Do, do you? I mean, we're going to have to pay it eventually anyway, but we could probably just get, maybe get more of a, you said you thought uh, town manager might have something that was sent along with this. No, this is all he sent me. Oh, I thought you said he's, he nope, had this is all he sent me. The, the only thing I might have is the actual bid document, the cost of $10,000, which would include something, you know, at some point. I shared it with the board, but I don't know where it is now. What questions do you have, Ellen? Just what I've already said. I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like we have enough information here. Why, what do you need? No, <laughs> I'm just asking for more of a breakdown. Um, it, was it 10,000 that? Yeah. I actually think we asked for more. Leah. Uh, Remember the uh, CPA was willing to give us some money for this. And yeah, I think it was. we asked for twelve or fifteen just to I cover it. I thought it was more than that. I think I'm pretty sure the whole. I think it was ten thousand dollars for the. I don't know what to say. I just. Do you want to take a look at what she sent first? Do you want to make a motion? So do you want to make a motion? Not if you guys have qualms about it. He's gonna. He wants to just pay it, I think. Mm -hmm. Do you want to go through the? Because this is basically what she's what we're paying her for the meetings she had with us. Yeah, but I don't think it, it, that doesn't break down the meetings. That just breaks down what the recommendations are. I think. You guys can talk amongst yourselves, and I'll see if I can find the actual bid documents, but probably not going to be able to find it. I have so much. Can we table it to the next meeting? Absolutely. When's the next meeting? I don't know. That's on the agenda. <laughs> I think we need to have something, though, to go back to say we'd like mm -hmm. more information on. what this includes. Right. So the motion is to table it. I'll make a motion to table the bill until our next meeting um, and request that we get more of a breakdown of, of this bill and a copy of the original proposal. Sounds good. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion um, to table the bill to the next meeting so we get more of a breakdown and uh, request a breakdown and copy the original proposal. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Uh, I'm just going to say we should probably pay it, but. Um, so, all in favor of tabling it till the next meeting? Aye. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to oppose that just because you know, they did do some work. I'm just not sure how much. Yeah, but it'll be good to get a breakdown. Okay, so that takes care of that. Sorry. Um, 
Mass Housing Technical Assistance Opportunity. Um, So I got an email. Oh, there it is. I got an email on Boy. Uh, September twenty seventh. Judy received information about this technical assistance grant with MHP. Mass Housing Partnership historically thinks the trust should apply. It would be a good way to continue support for the trust after the strategic plan is complete or may even inform it depending upon the <coughs> deadline, the timeline. I've attached the application here. The good news is it's very, very simple application. Bad news is it is due Monday, October 2nd. And I received it on the 27th on a weekend. So um, she sent it to Liz and myself. Liz and I, uh, Liz was awesome and put together as a real simple application you have it in front of you and uh, basically um, I just said well it doesn't look like we can do it because one of the things was you had to have some sh something shovel ready but they said don't worry about that so Liz put something together real quick she wasn't sure how much to put in there and they said that really wasn't important that important so um, it might be only two only two times of getting this so it's something didn't require much work and I didn't get approval of our board, and I apologize for that, but it was a two-day turnaround. And if it's going to be free money, um, I think uh, attaches, let me know what changes I can make. So it's basically, it would help us out if we get this, this fund. I think it's big money, too. Um, it's funny because I think somewhere in this email, thanks for heads up, looks great. Um, Whoever they sent it to, like Liz sent it to someone at the affordable housing, and they re replied, well, geez, I didn't even know, we didn't even know Abington had an affordable housing trust. This is excellent. So that's a good thing, you know, because we're new. Maybe they'll want to, because one of the things was identify um, community can make, provide background on the community's key housing needs and goals, why this community is focused on its goal, the above. So that's, we're focused because we have a brand new, you know, strategic plan, we're brand new, and we can use this, this, these funds to get up and running. So I'll let you know if that comes to fruition, but it was a very last minute thing, so I, I, I like to try to be open and bring stuff before the board, but something like this um, kind of fell on our lap. So it would be awesome if we get that, okay? Excellent. Um, I received an email at some point from the town manager saying, you might want to put this on your website. And it was uh, information about Weymouth's affordable housing lottery um, and I looked at it, and I said, uh, um, I, I thought, well, well what, what, it has nothing to do with Abington. However, it is for affordable local housing, and people from Abington are eligible. So um, I was going to bring it before the meeting and see if we wanted to put it on our website and discuss our website. Um, it's already on there. They put it on there, okay. which is fine. Um, I took a picture of the website. It doesn't do us, it does not do the, the I was going to say it doesn't do the website justice, but actually it does because it's kind of a crappy website. But uh, the thing that stuck out the most to me is, besides that I don't do minutes, is that the agenda for tonight's meeting wasn't on there. You know? It wasn't you, on the website? No. No. And this was, it never two, uh, was two days ago. So <laughs> I'm going to ask if, give us someone that, I thought that, um, what's her name in the town hall is supposed to be doing updating the websites. Tell me. Yes. And I'm not sure what, what, I mean, can we update our own website? I would love to put our mission statement on our website. I would love to put our strategic plan on our website. I would like to put articles that we share at our meetings about, you know, the benefits. This is one of the things that we, we I think is one of our goals in our strategic plan is to educate. You know, let, let's, let's use the website to educate, let people know what's out there, let people know where out there, and that we're meeting and that we're doing good things. So, um, uh, so I was going to take a vote to include that, but it's already on there. See if this is something that someone in town hall could do. My thoughts are, can you please put this on the website? And give it to them in a text document or whatever it is and just say, can you put this on the website, please? Or if not, let us do it. I just don't know how it works. So if it's agreeable to the board, <coughs> I'm going to send an email to town managers saying, or in, 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 I'll CC Tony Moquin and just say, what, 
how do we do this? You know, do, do, do other groups have access to theirs? I mean, if they can't even put, and I, when I do the agenda, you've probably seen it, uh, I, I, I can't get to town hall, so I, I, I send it to Liz, I send it um, to downstairs, and I, send, I include Tony Moquin on it, you know? So it, it, there's no reason for it not to be, and I get, I, I get the, and I promise I'll do a better job as further minutes go, but I mean, there's no reason that that should not be on here. Our agenda should be on here, and the no, our meeting date should be on the calendar. The meeting date wasn't on the calendar either. Yeah, that wasn't even on and the calendar. And that's not cool. How can we? I know, because I went in. Yeah. And I was like, uh. That one's a meeting. And then I went back to your email, because I yeah. was like, I, yeah, I'm sure the yeah. meeting's tonight. And then I'm like, it's not on the website. So then I got your email. and. Yeah. So I just, we, I want our website to be better. Okay? Yeah. So I'm going to find out how to do it. And if somebody, it would be really great if, if they say, yeah, you can update it yourself, maybe if one of our members could kind of help with that. But if not, we'll get Tony, ask Tony to do it. So I just want to make sure that's okay with the board that I reach out to the town manager and say, hey, we want, you know, yeah, we want stuff like this. This is great. The way things are great, you know? It should be on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there anything else that you guys want to talk about? Um, do we want to post a meeting for next Tuesday night, even if you can't make it? Yeah. So in case there's four of us there, which would be very double, well, there'll always be three of us there. Yeah. And there'll be you and me, so it's going to be, yeah. and if Suzanne goes, that will be three. So we'll have to post a meeting. Post a meeting for 6 o'clock next Tuesday. What time's the CPA on it? Seven. Seven. Why don't we just post for 6.30? So we don't really have to vote on anything, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah 6.30. 630. Is that you just meeting for the... Just in case we have to take a vote beforehand. For the, like, for the CPA? Though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just to, to, I, we have to present... Oh, shoot. I'm sorry, I think I, have, I think I have it here. I didn't do it. I do need one more vote before we go. So, every year, this is the same thing. Affordable Housing Trust Fund Committee. And the project is the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. To put money, you know, we're going to ask CPA, how much do we want to ask for? Hmm. This is something that... Again, I had the figures. I think we got more than half a million in there now. Uh, I think one year we got 250, one year we got 100,000, one year we got, I think we've asked for 300,000 and 250,000 in the last couple of years. Actually, I can tell you that last year, this is 23, last year we asked for 250,000. I think we got 100. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, the Here's the numbers right here. Oh. The year before that, we asked for 300. Oh, okay. So. So what are you giving us? I have an email from the town accountant that breaks it down. Uh, this says it's got 153, but there's also 100,000 that for some reason hasn't gone in yet. So th this says that once all the money is moved, there'll be 353,000 in the trust. Okay, so looking back. That was an email from July. Yeah. So l last year we asked for 250. The year before that we asked for 300,000. And what did they give you last? What did they give like us? Like 100 and 100 pretty much, I think. Like 100 plus 25 for Judy. Yeah. So, so I just wanted a number to plug in there and take a vote on a number. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask. That's why you always put more. And then if they, yeah, you know. ask for 250. Or yeah, yeah, why not? 250? Is that a motion? Sure. Uh, a second. Second. All right. So we have a motion, a second to ask the CPA for um, to fund our housing trust in the amount of two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, just FYI, and this is the same thing that I put in every year. Um, other funding sources and stuff we discussed again tonight: sales surplus, land tax, title sales, cell phone tower, lease payments, private donations, inclusionary zoning fees. Mass housing grants, mass development grants, et cetera. Those are things that we could use with debt additional. And this is to fund the uh, Edmonton Affordable Housing Trust, and the timeline is ongoing. Okay? So we have a motion to second for $250,000. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we will ask for that next Tuesday night. Okay? So back to the post for 6.30 next Tuesday, which is the 17th? Uh -huh. October 17th. Okay. And we are going to put in our CPA request and note that we, in theory, recommend 
the um, social habitat for humanity, and we also um, took a vote to endorse the historical commission's um, request for fifteen thousand dollars for a historic preservation plan. And that's it, I think, for us. Okay. okay. Do we want to schedule a regular meeting where we can really fine tune the um, and hopefully in the meantime she will have that two two and a half page summary mm -hmm. thing that that's, yeah. that we're missing. I have um, a question, Ellen, for you. You were um, going to talk to uh, Glenn Point Jr. at one point about his project. Yes. Because they have that down there. Is that on again? Do you know? Um, it's currently contract pending to be sold to somebody who's done this before. Um, and I believe the plan stays exactly as is. But okay. that's all I know. Is that a, considered affordable? Part, part, part of it is. Yes, 10, 1015 Plymouth Street would be. All affordable? I believe it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's all affordable. Senior affordable housing was the plan. Um, no, I think it's just over 55, but there, it was only. Um, oh, yes, it's over 55 and then 25% 25%, affordable. 25%, okay, that'll yeah. help though. Okay. I mean, if every project in town was 25%, would be golden, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and that, again, that's something we can work on for inclusionary zoning, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's big. I do yeah. too. And, I, and once we get some. Uh, and when we review this, I think I just yeah. touched on that. It's like in the third year, yeah. it looks well, like. But I think we have we to get, we have to start garnering some support and let people know yeah. we're not an enemy. We should work. try to get that exactly. sooner than, um, than later. All right, so looking at the calendar. Do you want to do November or another meeting this month? Well, here's the problem is I don't want to hold this bill up anymore. So if I can get that information for next Tuesday, yeah, we, we could should. vote on yeah. it. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, I could, if I get that information, I can share it and, you know, I mean, I know you can't vote. Well, you could even, you could even, where are you, where are you going away? <laughs> Closing up camp in Maine. You are. So you don't have a Zoom up there? You have a phone? You have a telephone. You could yeah, always I phone have it. A phone. You could always phone it in. I can, I don't know how to do Zoom, but I could call. No, you could do, we, no, that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll talk about it. You know, if we need, if it looks like we're going to need it, because I don't know what Jen's status is as far as this yeah, committee. Yeah, or, I have my cell phone, yeah. so. Okay. okay. It's going to be cold up there, isn't it? Yeah, camp? it is. Okay, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> it's not a pleasure trip. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry, you're going to batten down the hatches, I'm batten sure. Batten down the hatches. All right, so why don't we then... It, uh, November 7th and 21st are both com uh, community preservation meetings. Nice. At 7 o'clock. November 7th? Mm hmm That's election day. There's no elections. In Mass. Okay. Um, 21st. If we don't act upon that bill, I hate to delay it, much further, but I get we can't juggle our, we can't juggle our meetings. Well, I want to call for that bill to be voted on anyway. So he, up or down. Next Tuesday. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So why don't we plan on? Uh, maybe we should vote. Maybe we should meet before the next CPA meeting in November because we're going to have to probably. It, it, is it November when they're going to make the decisions? I have the breakdown. Or if you have, while she's doing that, can you see if the selectmen's meetings are listed? Because I do like meeting before the selectmen's meeting because it kind of opens up, it helps. Uh, well, the selectmen's meeting is the. Um, <laughs> You're so organized, Helen. <laughs> the 23rd. Of November? Oh, of October. Oh, okay. If you wanted to meet before oh. November 7th. Is that when the CP. Uh, when CP have to make the final recommendations? You know, I have it in here. First eligibility date is ten seventeen. It could be extended, pushed off until eleven seven. The final information application is due eleven twenty one. Eleven twenty-one. Okay, mm -hmm. so 
And now the selectmen's meetings in November, do we have those or not yet? Are they second and fourth? Typically. Uh, October? Yes. October. Yes, so they're second and fourth. Um, it, October. They were supposed to be the ninth, so they didn't meet, so they're meeting the 23rd. Of October. Correct. So in November they're going to meet? The 13th and the 27th. Do we want to do Monday the 13th, November 13th? Didn't you want to meet before the... Yeah, but you said that was the 21st, right? <laughs> no. I have so many dates in my head right now. No, no. That's the final one. The 21st. Yes. Yeah. So you want to meet the 17th? Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> no. November 13th. November 13th. November oh my 13th. God, I have too many numbers in my head right we're, we're now. We're meeting October, we're meeting next Tuesday night. Correct. Light at the, 17th. the 17th. That's where I get yeah. the 17th. And November 13th yep. will be our next, next well, all right, will be our November meeting. Okay. So we're going to meet November 13th at 5.30? Uh, yes, 5.30. 5.30? Before the selectmen's meeting. That way we can maybe get the town manager and Suzanne here without. You want to do a December meeting too? Just do the rest of the year, December 11th? Those are subject to change. If the selectmen don't end up meeting those days for some mm -hmm. reason, we can. What was the it. December one? Eleventh. Uh, okay. I'll get those meetings to the person that handles our website. Sorry. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to email. The one thing I didn't do that I t I said I would do, and uh, is reach out to the water department, but I don't even know if I should. I mean, what do what I- What do you want to know? Well, no, we were talking about asking them like, okay, there's a pool of, there's a pool of water. What do they call it? The, the bank, Allotment. the bank, the bank. They the call bank. water bank. Water bank. Are the schools, are those two schools to get into it? Because I mean, they, because previously they had water. I can ask the question because we'll probably go to the next meeting. Okay. Are those two schools figured into it? If so, how much? Because, I mean, I know I, I, I watched the video of the last meeting. I said there's 300 kids in the school. They're all using the bathrooms. Compared to 12 se seniors, I mean, you'd think there would, there would be enough water mm -hmm. if, there's, if they're still part of the bank. You know, maybe not for both. You know, if, if one school gets developed into something bigger, then obviously, right. you know, they have to steal money from the bank, but if there's, you know, if center goes through like the way they, they're talking, and again, we're, we're kind of out of the loop in that, but you know, if it's going to be 12 senior apartments, it's going to be 12 bottoms, 12 people using the bottoms rather than 300 kids, or 200 kids, say. Mm -hmm. I mean, you would think the bank would be able to, to supply that. I just don't know how this whole water thing works, and I don't think it's, I mean, is that something we should better off asking in a question? To get to get it document so yeah I, 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 I we go to we go to the meetings um, they do have a meeting coming up um, Ron noticed their agenda does not include public comment but I think they might have just <coughs> left it off. I, I'm gonna shoot an email to them and I keep I'm sorry and it's basically gonna ask that question just say future development because I don't know what's holding back there's no water left well if I, I don't you know, know what I I can call them I can call and talk to um, whoever's in the office, because they're not going to know what a meeting, they're going to they're gonna ask Crystal, and Crystal's going to probably have to find out from the office, like, if that's on the, on the roll. I, mean, I just, I, I feel like I'm, like, we're not in the loop. You know, they keep talking about these bid documents for the North <clears throat> and the, the center school, but they can't do them because they don't have the water, but then when we ask about the water question, nobody seems to have an answer for it. So you're gonna ask? I'll ask. Yeah. When you had the sewer moratorium, when I was on the sewer commission, you had a list. And there's a list right there, and you know. And like I said at the meeting, I went. We went to. They. It sounded to me like they listed. They lifted the moratorium. Okay. 
but but that's going to come up this weekend at the town meeting, I'm sure, because that's in that part of the problem up at the at the old the Yeah, the water. but they're talking about getting water from a different source. MWRA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or or um, Bridgewater. I don't know. I went to a couple. We we went to those meetings, but we couldn't see the screen, and we couldn't hear what they were saying, and we were right in the room, and then we left, and then the next meeting we watched on cable. We still couldn't. What meeting was that? That was the, oh, um, the planning water? board. Planning board meeting. Okay. And I think the next one was the selectmen's meeting. Well, let me tell you something. If someone was here, they could hear us. <laughs> no, but I mean, they they should when they have these big meetings. Yes. They should have screens on both sides of the room because when you're sitting, right, when it's a full house, exactly. You know. Yeah. Plus, when you get to your age, it's kind of here, so. Yeah. I can hear perfectly <laughs> well. I'm sorry. I heard you earlier, didn't I? Yep, and Noreen did too, so that was good. <laughs> um, motion to adjourn. <laughs> before it gets ornery. Uh, motion's made and seconded. Any further discussion? None. All in favor, aye. Aye. Unanimous, thank you.